Yes, indeed, the Ronettes on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop, and the legendary Ronnie Spector joins us this hour. You know, I am swooning talking to you. Oh, stop. <laughs> it's absolutely true. And I'll tell you what, you have this show, Beyond the Beehive, mm-hmm. at the City Winery in New York City, May 6th and 7th. Yeah. And I have to ask you about this show, because this is kind of a, I don't know, sort of a live musical autobiography. Right. <laughs> you you know? have, why do I have to call you? You know the answer. <laughs> it's my life story, you know, combined with all my songs, of course. And I always saying I never not do my hits. You know, so it's really, uh, it's, it's, people love it, that's all. I can't say for me, but they love it. <laughs> <laughs> Where did this idea come from to do this kind of show? Well, I tell you, Dave, I did it around 11, well, it was it 2001. I did it, a college uh, show. And somehow it just started snowballing. You know, more people were saying, well, we want to hear what you have to say about your story and your songs. So it, it took me all these years, but that's what it turned out to be. Hence the title, Beyond the Beehive. Beyond meaning I'm not above it, but beyond it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of different things that I, I love about doing this show. Absolutely adore it. Well, I've seen uh, so many clips of you over the years performing, and I don't think I've ever seen you give less than 100% when you're, when you're singing songs. And you, you must have sung some of these songs thousands of times <laughs> yes. by now. Well, you know what that is? I feed off of my audience. You know, they keep me alive. You know, I also sing the songs my audience likes. I've been to some concerts, and they may sing two or three of their hits, and then the rest like a new CD or whatever. Right, right. I don't do that ever. And I think that's why my audiences just stay with me. I, I, I mean, I sing Be My Baby. I don't know how many times I sang that song. <laughs> but I never get tired of it. It's because you have different audiences. And when you walk out there and the, the, the way they woo like over me, you want to sing, you want to please them. That's why I do my shows 100%. And then some. Just another classic from the Ronettes on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. Ronnie Spector joins us. She's got a a new multimedia show called Beyond the Beehive, kind of her life story. Ronnie, what was childhood like for you? Were you a happy kid? My whole life was so great growing up in Spanish Harlem and having, you know, my mom and dad and all my little first cousins and singing in my grandma's lobby. And that's when I knew I could sing when I was about eight years old. So... I said, wow, I have a story from the beginning to end, <laughs> so to speak. So, well, yeah, well, over yet. well, let's hope the end doesn't come for a long, long time. Yeah, but... well, I don't mind. <laughs> it's the only thing that I really love, you know, outside of my kids. My husband, you know, sure. that's the only thing. I love to sing, I love to perform, and I love my audience, and, and they feed me. <laughs> you know, I'm curious about... What you were like in high school? Were you a shy uh, kid, or were you beating people up for their lunch no, money? No, I, I wouldn't beat people up, but I wasn't <laughs> shy. Um, I was on the cheerleaders, oh, you know, stuff like that at George Washington High. So I, I wasn't, like, shy. Yet, you know, I didn't date and stuff. I was 15, 16. I was so busy doing my recordings at Colpix when I was, like, 15 years old. Right. So I'd come home at night after school and learn those songs because I don't know how to read music. Or play an instrument, <laughs> so I come home and learn my, you know, my songs and stuff. And that's how I learned how to sing. Actually, through Frankie Lyman and the teenagers, the students and the schoolboys. Wow! That's how I got my really first start. When I heard Frankie Lyman's "Why the Fools Fall in Love," I was a goner. <laughs> you know, because before that, it was Frank Sinatra or whatever, Nat King Cole. But when Frankie came along, the doo-wop scene mm-hmm. whoo, blew me away. His voice. And I didn't know if he's a boy or a girl, <laughs> but that voice just pierced me, you know. And, and I've never left that kind of a singing doo-wop and rock and roll. I love it, and I will never not love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you tell some great stories in the show, and I know that both the Beatles and the Rolling Stones loved the Ronettes. And I, I know you, you tell some stories in, the, in Beyond the Beehive. Is there one that maybe you can share with us? First of all, we were all very innocent. Mm-hmm. You know, we always had fun backstage was the the best times, you know. No drugs involved. We only had food and sodas and hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs> the, 
that was the happiest time because it was the innocent years. Because the Beatles weren't even known in America yet. Right. When I did my concert over there. So it's just been a, a, a hell of a ride, I tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> The ups and downs, too. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, over the past decade, there have been a lot of new groups and singers, especially mm-hmm. female singers, who've tried to sound like you and even going so far as to dress like you. What, oh, what, why do you that, think? Now, that made me sad because it makes me think of Amy Winehouse. Yeah, I know. You know? Yeah, she was one of them. I was a big influence for her. Yeah. That made me feel so great, Dave. You know, she was trying to wear hair like mine from the 60s and... I loved her, you know, and she's another one that was gone too soon. Yeah. You know, I even sing that in my show, my concerts, not my Beehive show. But, it, but I, you know, seeing her go at such a young age, that devastated me because I thought she was a girl that would take my place as I got older, you know, and she's 27 years old. So I said, oh, well, she's great. You know, she has right. the, the whole act and the whole attitude. And then she passed. So I, I was kind of devastated about that. Well, you know, that, that was a tragic loss, but I'll tell you, the music continues to endure. I'll tell you a story. I was at uh, Sirius XM the other day, mm-hmm. and there was this Japanese girl, young. She was just um, singing Be My Baby, and she came to America for them to play it at Sirius XM. And they found out that I was at Sirius XM. They said, Ronnie, you got to come meet her. She loves you. She just made Be My Baby. And that made me feel so so great to know and she was so young like maybe 18 19 mm-hmm. and she's singing be my baby recorded it already <laughs> so to, for me to come in there I, I almost she almost fainted you know <laughs> the fact that somebody's singing be my baby and they're like not even 20 years old and recording it and i'm right there in the same building <laughs> <laughs> The classic Be My Baby on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. Ronnie Spector is our guest. Now, I want you to listen to just a little bit of this song. That, of course, was the Beach Boys with Don't Worry Baby. Ronnie, when you heard that song, did you think of it as kind of maybe a tribute to you? No, that's a song that Brian wrote for me after Be My Baby. Right. He thought uh, Don't Worry Baby would have been a great follow-up, and so did I, by the way. Yeah. But uh, Phil didn't own any any of the songs, so that's why I couldn't record it. Well, I know you covered it, uh, I guess maybe it was about 15 years ago you did a version of it? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that's a great version And it's in my Beehive show. Oh, fantastic. (laughs) That's Ronnie Spector with her version of the Beach Boys' Don't Worry Baby from 1999's She Talks to Rainbow ZP. Ronnie Spector is our guest today on the Vintage Rock and Pop Shop. And Ronnie, I understand you've got new music. In fact, uh, you just covered Billy Stewart's I Do Love You, which we're going to play in, in just a second. And uh, that music, uh, well, fans can get it on your website, RonnieSpector.com. Well, how else can you do it these days? Dave? Well, I'll tell you what. You've, you've been in the record industry. You've seen it go from being the most powerful thing in the world with yep. the record labels and all that. Now it's the opposite. Now the artists are putting it out, all the music out themselves on, on the Internet. What do you think about that? Uh, I say one, one line to you. It's mm-hmm. the sign of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are so many artists now. Everybody wants to be a star. American Idol uh, voice. I mean, in the 60s, the ones that were really good got picked. You know? Right. Now it's everybody. (laughs) You know, and they come and they're gone. You know? That's true. And I'm so glad I'm still here, Dave. Yeah. And still having a great time on stage. It it means so much to me, you know, to have my audience there and I see them. Sometimes they scare me because I didn't know, know, know there's that many people out there, you know. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Well, you know, hopefully. It startles me in a way when I walk out, you know. Hopefully there's going to be a lot of people seeing you. The City Winery, May 6th and 7th. That the, is correct. Yeah, Beyond the Beehive. That's the multimedia show that Ronnie Spector is doing. I want to thank you so much for spending some time with us. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's been a joy to talk with you. Ronnie Spector, Beyond the Beehive at the City Winery, May 6th and 7th, and you have a great day, and and thanks so much. (laughs) 